In this video, I'm going to give a brief tutorial about how to use the Anki server. The Anki server is located at anki.ofmresearch.org. And if you put that address into your browser, you'll be sent to a login page that looks very similar to this one. On the login page are a number of links that describe uh, documentation associated with uh, software that's available on the Anki server, as well as links to the Anki website, links to the Anki YouTube channel, and links to the Anki Twitter page. If you lack credentials for logging into the Anki server, click on this link which will pop up an email box and you can send a request to the Anki administrators to get access. If you have credentials, type in your username and your password in the boxes provided. And the first thing that will happen is you'll be taken to a general information user page that will describe some of the resources that are available on the Anki server. There's some really interesting links here that are worth noting and probably worth visiting. Uh, the first thing that you'll find is some information about the basic computing environment at Anki, which is, which is built upon the Jupyter Lab computing environment. And if you've never used Jupyter Lab or you would like some information about it, click on the link here, Jupyter Lab User Guide, which is an excellent guide for how to use the basic Jupyter Lab environment. There are other links, that some of which are repeated from the login page, but most importantly there are links to documentation for the various software packages and links to the actual code repositories. Don't worry about having to write down or remember the information on this page. If you close it, you'll be taken to the Jupyter Lab environment, which will allow you to access notebooks and terminals and other sorts of resources for building software based on the Anki server resources. But importantly, you can always get back to this information by going to the Launcher tab, which should be visible by default, and clicking on Anki Info which will again bring back this info as a tab in the browser. If you come over to the commands menu, which is, which is visible by clicking on the commands tab on the left hand side of the browser, you can always reach this, info, this Enki information again by clicking on the command in the command menu. You can close the Enki information by simply getting rid of that tab which will bring you back to the launcher. This environment that you see on the screen here is basically the Jupyter Lab computing environment. It's a little bit different than Jupyter Notebooks, which you may be used to. The Jupyter Lab environment consists of a launcher window. It consists of a series of tabs on the left-hand side of the browser that give you access to uh, your local file directory. In the second tab, gives you access to the public notebooks available for, for the Yankee project. The third tab gives you access to the GitLab repository for Enki. The fourth tab gives you access to all the terminals and notebooks that are currently running in your computing environment. The fifth tab gives you access to all the commands that are available, including console commands, file commands, help commands, commands having to do with the Enki hub the computing environment, um, various launcher commands, uh, etc., etc., notebook execution commands, notebook operations, so on and so forth. Again, if you're interested in the tales, consult the Jupyter Lab guide that I mentioned previously. And finally, the last uh, tab uh, is the tab tab, and that simply tells you which tabs are open. Normally, you would, you would click on the Files tab to get access to the files that are in your local directory. The Jupyter Lab environment has some, some very nice features. And uh, one of them um, I can illustrate very, very simply by um, clicking on the uh, Terminal uh, button in the launcher window and uh, showing you how you can fill the screen with a terminal. But suppose you wanted to um, 
to use both a terminal and a notebook simultaneously. Well, let's find a notebook. Let's go over here to the Anki tab, which gives you access to the Anki public notebooks. And let's um, open up the folder containing the Melts notebooks. And let's choose a Melts notebook. Let's choose, for example, Melts.1.0 equilibrium. And this is just a Jupyter notebook that allows you to do Melts calculations using version 1.02 of Melts. You'll notice now that you have two tabs the terminal tab and the melts tab both open at the same time. Now suppose you wanted to have both of these things on the screen at the same time. Well you grab the terminal tab and you move it over to a portion of the screen and you can see how the screen partitions. The screen is now in a left and right partition. If I release the terminal tab now in the right partition, we actually have both of these things happening simultaneously on the screen. And you can open up as many windows and as many tabs as you want and display them all simultaneously, which is a very, very nice feature of the Jupyter environment. If, for example, we wanted to actually execute this, this uh, Melts notebook, we could do so in the usual way by holding down the Shift key and hitting Return and going through the notebook one by one. Or we could go over to the Command menu and come down to the um, notebook operations and, for example, execute commands like clear all output in the, in the notebook or um, run all the cells in the notebook. And if we do that right now, what will happen is that all the cells in the notebook will run and all the output from this melts calculation will be produced. And here it is visible in the browser. If files are produced as a consequence of the output, as is the case here, those files will be available in your uh, file directory here. Okay, those are the basic features of the uh, uh, environment. But there is one more thing that I'd like to include in this introductory video. It's not essential. You have all the basics for running in the Jupyter Lab environment in front of you here. But if you would like to uh, access GitLab through the Jupyter Lab environment, and particularly the Enki resources that are available at GitLab, there's the GitLab tab over here on the left-hand side of the browser. Now, by default, the GitLab tab is not configured properly to access GitLab because we need to actually input credentials for GitLab in order to get access to the software repositories. So I wanted to show you briefly how to get access to those credentials and how to set up the, the GitLab tab so that it's functioning for you. Uh, what you. The first thing you have to do is go to the settings, is to click on GitLab uh, tab, go to the settings menu, and go to the advanced settings editor. If you go to the advanced setting edit editor, you'll find the GitLab settings. And in order to set up GitLab to work in your Enki computing environment, you need to input information on the group name of the GitLab resources that you're trying to access, the username or user code for your account on GitLab, and a token that allows you to um, uh, have password credentials for accessing GitLab remotely. In order to get that token, the thing to do is to go to the GitLab page. This is gitlab.com and sign in on the GitLab page with your GitLab credentials. Now that happened automatically for me because I have automatic sign-in, but you may have to go through uh, the usual login page for GitLab to get access to GitLab. Here, the, by default, my access to GitLab lands me on the Enki portal page, and it's these resources that you'd like to have available through the Enki server Jupyter Lab environment in order to access them.
The way to get credentials is to come over here on the right hand side to the little button that corresponds to your icon and to ask for, I happen to be user gear so, but to ask for settings and a settings page will develop. And now come over to the left hand side and go down and find the access tokens tab. And the access tokens tab will take you to a place where you can generate an access token to feed into the credentials part of the GitLab access portal for Enki. And the easiest way to do this is to, is to create a token specifically for JupyterLab. So this is going to be my Jupyter Lab token. And it's going to expire. Um, I'm going to have it expire on Valentine's Day tomorrow. This is largely so that nobody can steal it, you that's looking at this video. And so it's going to have, it's going to be named Jupiter Lab Token. It's going to expire tomorrow. Yours should expire much more than just the next day. And we're going to click on Scope, which is API access. And if I just fill in those three things and click Generate Personal Token. The token information will be generated and the credentials will be made visible at the top of the screen. Now these are, are, are credentials that you should not share with anyone. The fact that it's visible here is because I've set this up to expire long before it could possibly be used. But these are the credentials that you need to input into your uh, GitLab settings on the Anki server. So now we return to the settings menu and the first thing we do is we copy the settings information from the defaults over to the user overrides. And when you do this copy, you have to, unfortunately, you have to add a few extra features just to get this to work. You have to add commas between the group name user code and username definitions just to make things formatted correctly. Now go back to the GitLab tab and copy this personal access token information to the clipboard, return to the uh, Enki server, and paste that information into user code. Then include your login information for GitLab as well as the a group name on GitLab that contains the repositories that you want to access. In this case, it's going to be Enki Portal. Now, if you save this information, the credentials will now be saved uh, and accessed only by you on in your directory on the Anki server and no one else will be able to get access to this token information which is really quite important. If we close the settings the launcher window will reappear and now if we come back over to the to the GitLab uh, tab you'll notice that that really nothing is there. Now if we if we click on the username or if we click on home Nothing seems to be happening, and that's because there's a initial, initialization problem with JupyterLab at this at this point in time, and not accessing these credentials properly. So what you must do is you must log in and log out. To log out of the Anki server, you come up and find the Hub menu. You click on Hub and you click on Logout, and that will take you back to the login screen. Now, if you type your credentials back in, you'll once again be at the Enki server, close the splash screen, and now if you come over to the GitLab tab, which will be open by default because JupyterLab remembers where you were, you'll see that the credentials that you've entered into JupyterLab 
now allow for automatic access of the GitLab repository. And if you put in the credentials that, that we did previously, the Enki portal with your username and your access token, you should now see a list of all of the repositories available on, at the Enki portal. And you can treat these just like a file system. So, for example, if I have um, GeoThermodat, I can open the GeoThermodat repository. Those are all of the directories and files within the GeoThermodat repository. I can open up Enki Datathon, and I can go to one of the notebooks associated with the Enki Datathon. I can double click on that notebook and it will copy it. It will open that notebook and bring it into the local environment on the Enki server. Now, of course, you don't have write access to the GitLab repository directly from the Enki server. So you've made a local copy, but you can always take this notebook and you can always save it as a local copy on your uh, disk and, um, and then use it and modify it as, as you wish. So the GitLab tab allows a, a pretty simple and transparent way to get access to the basic resources uh, on GitLab without having to log into GitLab and copy them and move them around. Remember though that the, the public notebooks that are commonly used as part of the uh, Enki server are also available from the Enki tab, and those are local copies of the notebooks on the Enki server. So you can always copy those and, 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 and make versions that are tailored to your own needs and so on and so forth. But they're actually available there, which may be a little bit easier than going to the GitLab tab. Okay, that's basically what I wanted to tell you about how to use the, the Enki server, and again, because the Yankee server is a multi-server platform, it's really quite important to make sure that the compute resources that you use on Enki, if you open a notebook or open a terminal or open a console or, or do some uh, computing on the Yankee server, make sure before you leave the Yankee server that uh, those resources are no longer running and taking up uh, space and time and, and just clogging up the system. So before you log out of the Enki server, always go to the running menu. If you've got something running, shut it down and then go back over to the files menu to make sure that everything is saved properly here in, in your system and go to the hub and log out. Thanks for watching.